welcome back to Learn with SOS. My name is Steve Sebastian Ousu, KNUS School of Business, and today I'm honored to walk you through good and bad arguments and deductive and inductive arguments in logic and critical thinking LCT 162. But please, before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more wonderful contents like this. All right, so let's crack on. As critical thinkers, one of our aims is to make a good argument. So the question is, what constitutes a good argument? Or what makes an argument a good one? Now, a good argument should meet these standards. One, every good argument should be valid and strong. We will explain those terms as we move along. Secondly, all the premises of a good argument should be plausible. Plausible here means it should be credible, it should be believable, it should be rational, it should be likely to be true. And lastly, the premises of a good argument should be more plausible or credible than the conclusion. Why are we saying this? Because in critical thinking, we make a conclusion based on the premises. So the premises serve as a pillar. So if a building has a weak pillar or weak pillars, that means the whole building is weak. That's why we say that the premises should be more stronger or plausible than the conclusion. So on that note, if any argument fails to meet one or more of these standards, it becomes a bad argument. And that is what we are trying to run away from as critical thinkers. Now, let's look at an example of a good argument. One or premise one. All KNUST lecturers are PhD holders. Dr. Esuman is a lecturer in KNUST. Dr. Esuman is a PhD holder. This is an epitome of a good argument because it's valid. It's valid because the premises guarantee the conclusion. There is a logical flow right from the second premise you can even close your eyes and predict what the conclusion will be that's what we call validity also the premises are plausible and the premises are more plausible than the conclusion because the conclusion just rests on the strength of the premises so this is an epitome or an example of a good argument now there is one form of bad argument that we need to be wary of. That is begging the question. Some people call it circular reasoning or circular logic. And the other Latin name, petitio principi or principi, however you want to pronounce it. Now, what is begging the question? Begging the question is, is a form of argument, is a form of a bad argument that the conclusion repeats one or more of the premises or begging the question can come in the form whereby the conclusion becomes more plausible than the premises now let's look at an example of an argument that begs the question now we have three examples here let's see if we can or agree if they all beg the question or they are all circular logic or circular reasoning the first one God exists is the conclusion or the claim let's look at the reasons God exists because one God wrote the Bible two God never lies and three the Bible says God exists so the last premise repeats the conclusion that makes it begging the question and you can see that the conclusion is more plausible or more credible than the premises you see God exists is the claim and that's the bigger picture 
But he's saying we should believe God as it because the Bible says God exists. It's, if not given enough evidence, you are just circulating around an idea. That's why people call it circular reasoning. The second one, chocolate is very healthy because it grows on trees. So chocolate is very healthy is the claim. We agree. But what, what, what is the premise? It grows on trees. That is very weak. Because the fact that chocolate grows on trees doesn't mean it is healthy. It is not everything that grows on trees that are healthy. So you can see that the, the conclusion is more plausible or the conclusion makes more sense than the premise, which is still the like, question. The last one. Happiness is the highest good for a human since all the other virtues are inferior to it. So happiness is the highest virtue or the highest good for a human is the claim. But the, the premise that all other virtues are inferior to happiness doesn't make happiness the highest. So this you can see that the conclusion is more plausible than the premise, which makes it begging the question. And these are the kind of arguments you don't have to be making if you want to call ourselves critical thinkers. Now, we are, we are always, I mean, evaluating arguments. But to evaluate an argument very well, you need to know what form of argument are we making. So in critical thinking, there are two forms of um, argument. We have deductive argument from the word deduce an inductive argument from the word induce. Now let's start with deductive argument. Deductive argument is a form of argument that provide or that provides a conclusive support for its conclusion. That means the kind of support a deductive argument the premises gives to the conclusion there are no holes you can't punch holes within. It gives it a conclusive or a complete support. So you can see it gives it a total or what? Absolute support to the conclusion. And also, the truth of the premises guarantees the truth of the conclusion. So there's no way in a deductive agreement, sorry, in a deductive argument, the the premises will be true and the conclusion will be false. No. And also, with deductive arguments, they move or start from a general observation to a specific observation. And one common example of deductive argument is a syllogism. A syllogism is just a, a three-lined argument with exactly two premises and a conclusion. Now, let's look at an example of a deductive argument. Let's see if this argument meets the criteria for deductive argument. So one, all Ashantis eat fufu. Abena is an Ashanti. Therefore, Abena eats fufu. So you see, the premises guarantees the truthfulness of the conclusion. So you see, you can even close your eyes and predict the conclusion. And because it started with a general observation that all Ashanti, so the word all means it captures all the people within the set. That makes it a deductive. So deductive moves from a general observation, then it narrows it down to a specific observation. And you can see that there is no way all Ashantis eat fufu. Abena is an Ashanti. There's no way Abena will not eat fufu because Abena falls within the bigger set or Ashantis eat fufu. Abena is an Ashanti. So we can confidently conclude that Abena will eat fufu. So this is an epitome of a deductive argument. 
now deductive argument has some subunit or subdivision that we have to know so if the truth of the premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion then the argument is deductively valid so a valid argument is a subset or is under deductive argument now with validity we mean the, the logical flow the ease with which the premises helps you to predict the conclusion that is what we call validity it's not about the premises being real or being true in real life no it's just the logical flow for example let's assume you had a son or a daughter you went outside and someone came to the house and you came and your son or daughter said mom or dad today someone came here now I'm going to describe the person who came try if you can predict the person if you're able to do that effortlessly that what we call validity so now if the child says mom or dad today you went outside a man came here he was a well-built man he was wearing a black hat black top black down he had his name on his chest he was with a gun he was holding handcuffs i have not even ended the description but you can predict is the police why because the description i gave you made it so easy to know i'm talking about a policeman so with deductive argument when we talk about validity that means the premises makes it easy effortlessly for you to predict the conclusion that's what we call the logical flow and the moment all the premises of an argument is true then it becomes deductively sound so now let's understand this if the premises guarantees the truthfulness of an argument it is valid and if a valid argument has all the premises through it becomes sound so we start from deductive to validity to what to soundness so soundness is under validity so that means we can have a a valid argument that is not sound we can also have a valid argument that is sound at the same time now let's see a valid argument that is not sound because with validity we talk about the logical flow how the conclusion comes as a result of the premises let's look at this uh, main argument all women are pillows rachel is a woman we can therefore conclude from the premise or make an inference or move from the premise that Rachel is a pillow. This argument is valid, but it is not sound because in reality, women are not pillows. They are human beings, right? They are not pillows. So you see, this is a valid argument because there is a logical flow. You can the conclusion follows exactly from the premises, but it is not true. Women are not pillows. So this is a valid but what unsound argument. Now let's look at a valid argument that is sound. All dogs drink water. Chihuahua is a dog. Therefore, Chihuahua drinks water. Now it is valid because there is a logical flow. The conclusion follows from the premise. At the same time, the premises are true. Because one, all dogs drink water. Don't they? Yes, they do. Secondly, Chihuahua is a type of dog. So the moment all the premises of a valid argument are true, we get what? A sound argument. Now let's move to the, uh, the, the second form of argument, that is inductive argument, the opposite of deductive argument. So with inductive argument, the premises provide a probable support 
to its conclusion. So that means the kind of strength the premises of an inductive argument give cannot be compared to the one a deductive will give. So if a deductive argument, the premise will give the support as 100%, inductive will give somewhere 60, 70. So with inductive argument, you can question the conclusion. You can find some other way to put the conclusion. There are holes in the conclusion. So it gives it what we call a probable, it's likely. And with inductive, they start from a specific observation to a general observation. And also with inductive, the premises can be true, but the conclusion can be false. That's why we say that in inductive argument, the premise provides what a probable, something probable means either true or false. Now, under inductive argument two, if the premises provides a very likely support to the conclusion, we call it a strong argument. And the moment all the premises of a strong argument are true, we get a cogent argument. So as we have deductive to inductive, valid to strong, soundness to cogent or cogency. So when you hear um, strong argument and cogent argument, we are talking about inductive argument. Let's look at an example of an inductive argument. Premise one, my mom is a good cook. My friend's mom is a good cook. Therefore, all moms are good cooks. You see, you are saying in your head, no, that's not the case. Yes. That's the feeling you get when you, are, when you hear inductive argument. The fact that my mom is a good cook and my friend's mom is a good cook doesn't guarantee that all moms are good cook. It just probably true because i know deep down some of us we know that some of our moms are bad cooks but we are afraid to talk about it so you see this is an example of what inductive argument you see the premises give a, a probable conclusion you can doubt the conclusion because we have examples of some moms they are very very <clears throat> let me pause there so now this diagram will help us to understand what we have discussed so far. So we see there are two forms of argument, deductive and inductive. With deductive argument, the premises provides a conclusive support, a strong support. The moment you listen or hear the conclusion, you will never question or doubt it. And the moment the truth of the premises guarantees the truth of the conclusion. We get a valid argument. The opposite is invalid. And under valid argument, the moment all the premises of a valid argument are true, we get a sound argument. When we come to inductive argument, that is whereby the premises provides a probable support to the conclusion. So if the premises are providing a very likely support, we get a strong argument. The opposite is a weak argument. However, if you have a strong argument with all the premises being true, we get a cogent argument. I think with this diagram, it will help us to know that valid sound is an adductive, strong cogent is under inductive. So, great minds, that is all about good, bad, deductive, and inductive. So, I believe, henceforth, if you listen to an argument, you can determine whether it is deductive or inductive. Alright, that is where we end today's video. Till then, see you when I see you. Bye-bye.